From Mark andre Fleury to Philip Gustafson to Jesper Volstead, the Minnesota Wild have an interesting cross-section of past, present, and future at their goalie position. So where are we at with all three? We will discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new content throughout the week. And so that you can be part of the ever-growing conversation on YouTube. On today's episode of Locked and Wild, we take a look at the past, present, and future for the Minnesota Wilds goalie position. We'll talk about some historical context for Mark Andre Fleury. We'll talk about the potential to look at Philip Gustafson as a trade chip. And we'll also talk about Jesper Volstead and what he can pull from his first NHL start and what he can uh, continue to build off of down in Iowa in anticipation for more of those NHL starts coming next year. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed member of the Minnesota Wild Media Group, and the people's host of the People's Podcast. And in recapping a large portion of Marc-Andre Fleury's career, as we did in uh, yet another record-breaking Lockdown Wild postcast after uh, last night's game against the New York Islanders. Did you know that even though Marc-Andre Fleury has played just three seasons with the Minnesota Wilds, he's in the top 10 in terms of goalie stats in Wild history. Fleury is seventh in games started with 75 in those three seasons and he is tied for seventh in wins with Darcy Kemper who has also had uh, 41 wins so Flurry with 41 wins in uh, three years of games for the wild his overall numbers with Minnesota 41 27 and seven so it is funny that somebody who has been here kind of on the back end of his career still in the top 10 for uh, the Minnesota Wild in many goalie statistics. Now, obviously, it's not a long list because this is a franchise that is entering uh, it has only been around since 2000. So it's not like there's a huge amount of history to pull from, but I think it just goes to show you how outside of a couple of names, the Minnesota Wild have had a ton of goalie turnover, uh, whether it be backup goalies or starting goalies. Uh, Nicholas Backstrom, Devin Dubnik, Manny Fernandez, and uh, Dwayne Rolison, the main names that have started games for this franchise over the years. Backstrom, obviously, the most notable, but Dubnik certainly had an incredible run himself. And then you have Manny Fernandez, who was here in the early part of this franchise. Dwayne Rolison got a ton of games, even though he was only here for four seasons. You've got Josh Harding in the mix as well. But you look at some of these names that have started games for this Minnesota Wild team. Darcy Kemper, who was with Minnesota, then went to Arizona, then went to Colorado, now with Washington. Alex Stalock, who uh, is still bouncing his way around the NHL. Cam Talbot, who was here for two seasons and now has found the fountain of youth with the Los Angeles Kings. Capo Kakinen uh, in a tough situation out in San Jose. But some of these other names, Jose Theodore getting uh, a season's worth of starts. Ilya Brizgalov getting 12 starts for the uh, the Minnesota Wild. Anton Hudobin getting the early part of his career before going to Dallas 
And you look at who is currently 20th in starts for the Minnesota Wild. Jesper Volstead with his one. Philip Gustafson is 10th with his uh, 62 games through his uh, two seasons with the Minnesota Wild. And so we're in a position in which is just this interesting dynamic of kind of past, present, and future. And we talked about this in the postcast. So I don't want to rehash it a ton, but you just look at what it took for Marc-Andre Fleury to be able to get to the 1,000 games mark and also to get to 552 wins. And it's it's something that is not as common as it was back in the early part of Fleury's career, seeing goalies get 60-plus starts. Fleury accomplished that mark in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2009-2010, 2010-2011, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011-2012, 2011
agile, just as athletic now as he was when his career started. He still bounces out of the net. He still is not afraid to come flying up the ice to try to play a puck that somebody has on a breakaway. He just he he has no fear. Even at this stage in his career of of throwing it all out there on the line to try to come away with a win. So you got to have the longevity. You got to have the fearlessness. And if we've learned anything from Marc-Andre Fleury and his tenure here, because there have been plenty of great starts that he's had as a member of the Minnesota Wild, there also have been some very forgettable ones. The ability to move on from a bad start and be ready to go the next night is something that you have to have, especially as a goalie, the ability to shake off adversity. And Flurry has been in the net for plenty of goals against throughout the course of his career, but he just continues to answer the bell and continues to put himself in position to be able to, to rack up wins. And so it's no accident that he is now second all time in wins in NHL history because of the way he prepares, the way he keeps his body ready, and the way he's able to flush, even even moving on from a good start, because you're not going to necessarily have your same stuff, quote unquote, every game. And so the ability to reset after wins and losses is something that I think has been key for him to continue this run that he has been on well into his late thirties, well into the age at which a lot of other athletes have just not been able to sustain that level of play. And yet Mark Andre Fleury is still here doing it. And so it's pretty easy for me to say that there just is not going to be another guy like Fleury who encompassed the skill and the style and the swagger all into one when he was out there on the ice. There truly will never be another like him. And so that's why I have been so appreciative of what he has brought to this team over these last couple of seasons. And the the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, seventh in franchise history in wins and starts in the three seasons that he's been here. So he, he has been an absolute workhorse for this team over these last few seasons, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see what he has in store for the uh, the rest of his uh, maybe likely final season with the Minnesota Wild, and probably final season in the NHL. He could move into in a from a starts standpoint. He could move into fourth, depending on how the rest of this season goes. You figure there's, I think there's 40 games left, 40 or 39. If he gets 14 more starts, he will tie Darcy Kemper for fourth all time in franchise history with 89. If he gets 15, he will move into fourth place outright in starts in Minnesota Wild history. Now, from a wins perspective, He'd need 10 to tie Cam Talbot. 11, and he moves into sixth all-time in Minnesota Wild franchise history. So maybe there are still some numbers that Flurry can chase down the stretch for this team, but uh, obviously we kind of have a little bit of a different idea as to how the rest of this season plays out. And don't worry, we are going to get to Bill Guerin's comments at the the outset of yesterday's game. Uh just wanted to do kind of some goalie talk here to get us going, but we'll we'll react to those comments and I'll lay out exactly what the Minnesota Wild would have to do if the playoffs are in store for their future. Again, going on record and saying I don't think that's in the cards, but if we'll lay out what exactly would have to happen coming up for you tomorrow, but For now, I want to talk about an interesting theory that has been dropped 
as to how the Wilds could look at their goalie situation going forward. And so when we come back, we'll talk about what to do with Philip Gustafson going forward. That's on the way as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. And if you are trying to live more in the moment here in 2024, trying to attend more concerts, trying to watch the Minnesota Timberwolves light things up at the Target Center more in person, or trying to catch the PWHL here in Minnesota as the uh, ladies off to a rock and start, you can capture all of those events with great tickets at Game Time. Game Time offers you last minute deals on tickets, plus views of every seat in the venue you're headed to. And best of all, they don't blindside you with those fees that are so commonly attached to tickets. They show you exactly what you're going to spend before you hit checkout. Game Time can help you take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And we thank you for tuning or for turning the Locked on Wild YouTube comment section into one of the biggest in the network. Let's keep that rolling here with some good conversation regarding today's episode, talking all about the goalie situation. And so we talk about Marc-Andre Fleury as the kind of past version of this uh, full credit to Judd Zolgad of Judd's hockey show on score North for floating this idea. And it was something that I wanted to discuss and figured it'd be perfect to throw in kind of as the, the middle to a goalie centric episode here today. Judd was talking with Jesse Pierce of the bar down beauties podcast about what to do about the goalie situation. And if we are on, if we are of the mindset, which we are, it's, it's funny that those three shows are kind of what I call the uh, triangle of reality in just looking at this, not being a season where the wild are likely to make the postseason. So you're looking then at what you can do at the deadline to acquire some additional assets to allow you to have some more opportunities to draft in the offseason. And one of the names that was brought up by Judd was Philip Gustafson as a potential trade chip. And let's, let's just talk this out. Because what do we know about Philip Gustafson? Number one, he is 25 years old. He is signed for two seasons after this year at $3.75 million per season. There's no trade language attached to his contract. And we also know that the expectation next season is that Jesper Volstead will be taking Marc-Andre Fleury's spot on the roster. And so what Judd hypothesized was, You sign Flurry for a one-year deal to bring him back to be the mentor to Jesper Volstead, and you try to accumulate a high pick for Philip Gustafson because if Jesper Volstead is going to be your bell cow, if he's going to be your number one guy and is going to start somewhere between 55 and 60 games a season, Philip Gustafson becomes a luxury like it would be. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a nice thought to having a guy like Gustafson to go with Jesper Volstead, because then your goalie situation is completely covered. If one of them sustains an injury, the other is capable of stepping in and filling in the uh, filling in the starting 
situation long term. It is a goalie situation that I think the Wild would hope would someday replicate what the Boston Bruins have with Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman. So the pros for a Philip Gustafson trade are as follows. Gustafson, again, it's it's not as though he's a rental, so he comes with control. He comes with two additional seasons of control at a relatively, it, it's not a huge cap hit for a goalie. Jack Campbell, who's in the AHL right now for the Toronto Maple Leafs, is making $4 million a season. And I don't think there's any question as to who is the better goalie right now. So a pro is that he is under team control for a couple of additional seasons. He's 25 years old. He showed last year that he is capable of going on dominant runs of play. Although I think if we're being honest with ourselves, I think what we saw from Gustafson last year is probably the height of his powers. He has not been as good this year to say the least. Although he has been much better here over his um, recent run of starts than he was at the beginning of the season. So those are all the pros of this situation. And honestly, if you're looking at players that you're trying to move on from at the deadline that give you the best chance to get something good in return, He's probably on the top of the list because a, a lot of the other players that you would have to be able to move at the deadline this year, I, I don't know that they bring you a ton in value. So you have the opportunity to kind of get into a little bit of a bidding war at the trade deadline if that is a, a route that you want to go in moving on from Philip Gustafson. But here's my thought on this situation. I would be, my ideal situation is, is this. Marc-Andre Fleury retires at the end of the season, and that's that. You bring Jesper Volstead up to start the season. He is your 1B. You give him a requisite amount of starts to get his feet wet at the NHL level. You have Philip Gustafson there to be able to, uh, to help him out and to be able to be part of that tandem. But I'm a little leery of leaving Volstead fully exposed next season. If you were to trade Gustafson at the deadline this year or in the off season. I worry the risk of leaving a true rookie goalie as like your your de facto guy without any backup plan if he gets hurt or if look with young players especially with goalies there may be instances in which you just need to give a young guy a little bit of a mental breather to take everything in if you are thrown into the lineup full speed there may be instances during the season in which you just need an opportunity to kind of get a bit of a breath. Philip having Philip Gustafson on the roster gives you the opportunity to do that. Now, there are some names on the free agent list that would be able to be thrown in to be a backup. I mean, you look at, for instance, I'll just throw Laurent, Laurent Brassois out there. Having a great season with Vancouver as their backup. He's seven and three with a 2.19 goals against average, making $1.75 million. Anthony Stolarz with the Florida Panthers. He's six and three with a 2.22 and a 913 save percentage. He's making $1.1 million. Scott Wedgwood's 12 and four with a 3.03. So there are some names if you went that route. That you could um, that you could throw in, but I think I think the better target, if you go that route with Gustafson, is next year's trade deadline. Because let's say the Wilds have a similar season next year that they have had this year, 
and Volstead shows that he is like he's getting the hang of things by the trade deadline. Philip Gustafson has a, a relatively good year. The point being, let's say you get to next year's trade deadline and you feel comfortable handing the reins over to Volstead. Then I think you make the move at that point because then whichever team you send him to has an additional season of control and you therefore are likely to get something more of substance than just simply giving somebody away as a rental um, to, you know, to help them for the playoff push. I'm not in I'm not against the idea in, in the slightest really, because again, you're talking about a luxury for a team that is going to have an incredibly hard time making the postseason this year and next year too. But then again, it's a huge security blanket to allow you to really gradually ease Jesper in without fully overwhelming him in his first season in the NHL. So I think if I had to make the decision, I probably look at this again next trade deadline as opposed to this trade deadline. But it, Judd is right. If you're looking at players that are going to give you the best chance to get something tangible in return, Philip Gustafson's at the top of the list for this Minnesota Wild team. So food for thought. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you think it's something that the, uh, the team should look into or if they should put Gustafson on the uh, part of the list of players that they should not consider trading. We'll finish by talking about Jesper a little bit and some of the things that he can pull from his first NHL start as he uh, looks to make many more of them starting next season. That is on the way as we finish today's episode of Locked and Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. And now that we have pushed through the halfway point of the NHL season, the Minnesota Wild looking more and more like the playoffs just aren't in the cards. But even though they are not likely to make the postseason, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether Minnesota Wild players such as Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Eriksson, Matt Boldy, or Marco Rossi will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers tomorrow, we'll dive into the Bill Guerin comments on the state of the wild address before Monday's game against the New York Islanders. We'll talk about the belief in the current roster and we'll, I'm going to go through the literal numbers as to what the wild would need to do in order to make the postseason. And again, I can't stress enough. I don't think it's something that is attainable for this team, but because there are people that do, We'll lay out exactly what they have to do so that we know as the second half of the season rolls on if it's something that they are going to be able to accomplish. So again, I'm not super optimistic about that, but we will honor it as a possibility by just, just straight up diving into what would have to happen. So you can look for that coming up for you tomorrow here on Lockdown Wild. And... Um, just finishing tonight's goalie centric episode of Locked on Wild by talking past, present, and future. Flurry, Gustafson, and Volstead as we digest 
Jesper's first start with the Minnesota Wild against the Dallas Stars, it was not great. And it was not all Jesper, to say the least, but it ends up as a uh, 7-2 to two loss. And the comments after the game by both John Hines and by Jesper were, I think, encouraging if you are uh, hoping that we see way more of him starting next season. Um, just looking at, uh, you know, what he had to say after the game. Uh, let's start with what John Hines had to say. Hines said he certainly left a hungry player. That's a real positive because he's such a talented kid. He's got great upside. He will be a great NHL goalie. And I think sometimes when young, when you're young through an experience like that, he left here more motivated. And I think that's really good for him. And it's good for us. Also, uh, Volstead, um, just I, I liked his confidence heading into that game talking about uh, having to play against a great Dallas team. And, you know, he, like, like you said, the, like Heinz said, the, uh, the fire that he showed and look, Volstead, I think has that same sort of pedigree that we applaud Brock Faber for so much. And that I think he is somebody who, has a level of confidence that you need to succeed at this level. But I think he's somebody who is bothered enough by losing that he's going to see what all went wrong. And I think one of the biggest things in looking back at that start against the Dallas Stars was just the speed. The speed was something that Jesper had a tough time with, not only the speed of play, but also the speed of the shots. It seemed like he got beat on a few occasions by just some blistering slap shots that he was not able to get to quick enough to make the saves. And so, again, you don't know. You aren't going to know what you need to improve upon unless you get a little taste, unless you get a little taste to satisfy that appetite. And we saw this with Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi. We saw it with Boldy the year before he came up here um, for good is that he got that little taste when the Wild had a bunch of injuries against the Boston Bruins. And from that point on, it was pretty evident that, uh, that he was going to be a good player. We saw it with Rossi. He came up and that first part of last season, did not really work out at all, but he got a taste. He went down to Iowa. He worked on a couple of things. He put in a full off season of work to get himself into position to succeed. And look at how things have worked out so far this year. He's been one of the better players on the ice for the entirety of the season. These young players, you get an opportunity to see what it takes to succeed at this level. And you either work at it and get yourself in a position to succeed, or it just is too much. And it's something that you just are never able to, uh, to live up to. But again, you have to have that drive. You have to have that competitive nature to be able to learn from a bumpy start. And harness some of that frustration, harness some of that competitive fire and put it to good use. And I, I have no doubt that Jesper is going to do that because, again, I think what we have seen from him so far throughout his AHL career is he has just this overabundance of confidence and he harnesses it almost to kind of a. I don't think cocky is the right word, but almost to like a, you know, that borderline of overconfidence and just assuredness that you're going to be good and you need that. So he has all of the tools that you need up here, 
Now it's just a matter of getting his play on ice to be able to match to the point that then when he comes back up, that the team in front of him is a disaster. He is able to offset that through his own play. So it, it is just, it's fun at this point to get kind of this past, present, and future at the goalie position because you know, we're, we're seeing like the passing of the torch right in front of us is Flurry is passing the torch to Gustafson. And at some point, Gustafson is going to pass the torch to Jesper Volstead. And so you look at that goalie situation, there are a ton of other question marks for this Minnesota Wild team. It feels like they've got... It feels like they've got a good mix at the goalie position here uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Again, we appreciate you tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Wild and making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day or staying up late with us for these Locked on Wild after darks. Uh, make sure to tune in for tomorrow's episode as well. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Make sure to hit this video with a like if you uh, are watching on YouTube. And uh, make sure to give us a uh, review on Apple or Spotify if you're listening via audio as well. You can find new content by subscribing and following us on all of your favorite podcast platforms and on YouTube so you don't miss out on any new Minnesota Wild news or notes throughout the week and throughout the rest of the season. We have new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.